Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. We're taking a step back tonight, looking at some positive things involving the environment through the eyes of uh, an awards program that's handed out every year by the state, the Department of Environment and Conservation. There are multiple categories. We kind of want to just get a sense, as I said, get a sense of what is going on out there that is positive, because there's certainly plenty that um, might not be positive. So what, what are some positive things with the environment? And we have with us Kathy Galapa. She is program manager of the Office of Policy and Sustainable Practices there at the Tennessee Department of Environment and Conservation. And I wanted to go with um, the winner for water quality. This winner was in Davidson County, and it was the Cumberland River Compact. So tell us what was going on with this. This, again, this one for what they did, uh, I guess, last year and last couple of years. But tell us what this was all about. So the Cumberland River Compact is a nonprofit in Nashville, and they focus on stream cleanups. And they, they kind of took an idea of uh, expanding that stream cleanup to what they call the Clean Streams Initiative, which took them three years to get to kind of that point. They were able to, in three years, do 235 stream cleanups in 17 different counties here in Middle Tennessee, because they focus on the Middle Tennessee uh, watershed. They had over 2,700 volunteers and they removed 135,000 pounds of trash um, from 64 different waterways. And that is outstanding amount of, of trash. They said that the weight of all trash removed was equivalent to 4,900 tires and 6 million plastic water bottles or 35, three, no, 305 million <laughs> cigarette butts. <laughs> that's a lot of cigarette butts. Okay, so that's great. So they removed that much trash out of our, our rivers and waterways in, in Middle Tennessee, in just a few counties here in Middle Tennessee. Mm -hmm. That's great. And it says, yes. I, I'm reading some of it as all, well, the variety of litter in Tennessee's rivers is exhaustive, but plastic litter is reaching truly astonishing proportions. So it sounds like they really focused on a lot of the plastic we're seeing, is that right? Mm-hmm, and tires, they, they remove a, an, amazing amount of tires out of the, the waterways. Every time we do a stream cleanup, we probably take at least 20, 20 tires out of the river or this creek or the stream, wherever we're cleaning up at, at least, if not more. Um, so you'd be amazed between tires and plastic, the amount of stuff that is pulled up out of those streams and creeks. And so um, how how were they recognized then? They did this over three years. They got rid of all this stuff. Are they continuing to, to do this kind of thing or kind of where do we go from here? They do. So Cum the Cumberland River Compact is uh, an organization that is continuing to do the same exact things that they're doing, just trying to figure out how to do it better and and figure out how to get out more into, into the waterways. Um, they, this past, this project alone, the, the year that they won for, they had um, five different state agencies, three federal entities, and um, over 110 different organizations participate in those stream cleanups. So they reach out to companies and say, hey, you guys looking at doing an environmental project? If so, we'd love for you to come help us clean up a, a, a river or a stream or what have you. And they, they do this I don't want to say year round, but they do it a probably 10 months of the 12 when it's not super, super cold. They're still out there cleaning the riverbanks up. So if anybody ever wants to get involved with them, they're always looking for volunteers to help with stream cleanup. And reading about plastic, the plastic litter is reaching truly astonishing proportions. A recent study of the Tennessee River uncovered 18,000 microplastic particles per meter. How are all, what, how is all that getting in there? What's going on? Well, this particular project, they did a huge cleanup after the tornadoes in Nashville. So some of that is tor the tornado cleanup that they did focus on right here in, in Davidson County after the tornadoes in March. So most of that is, I don't want to say most, a chunk of that is from tornado cleanup. The other plastic parts are just people litter bugging. There's people still might let their bottles fly out of the back of their trucks or they might still be throwing garbage bags out or 
Um, it might not just make it to the, the landfill or the, the garbage place. So um, we still do have people littering and the only way we can stop that is, you know, <laughs> educate. And that's what we try to do at the department is educate people about why it's important not to litter and why what are the avenues that you can take not to litter. And why plastic is especially bad, and, and we're seeing that, and so um, that should all be on everyone's radar. And so, okay, that's great. I love that. Davidson County, the Cumberland River Compact, it won last year. Now, you've done this a while. Before I move on to the next category, are there some other water quality things that have, you know, that stand out to you in, in past years or even that were maybe um, up for the award last year. Is there anything else before we move on when it comes to water quality that, that would be good to kind of hold up? I think it's probably good to talk about a variety, the variety of types of nominations and or winners that we've had. The year before last, uh, Mill Crofton Utility District in Williamson County won for doing some upgrades to their uh, water meters at people's houses. They put in what's called advanced meter infrastructure and it allows them to be able to have real-time data on whether they have leaks in the system or uh, whether the resident has a leak at their place. So they, they're able to monitor real-time data with water from the time it leaves their facility to the time it reaches the customer and know that if they've um, sprung a leak halfway you know two miles from the facility underground they're able to know like right then that that something's going on so i, I do want to make sure that we talk about the types of variety of projects that can be nominated it's not just um you know river cleanup it is definitely water quality and how how to make sure that we're improving the quality of water in the state of tennessee but it, that can come in various forms and fashions um, like I said, the utility district won for just doing upgrades. And the reason why that is good for water quality is you're not losing all that water. If they find out that they had a leak, then they know now, oh, we have to go out there and fix this leak wherever it is. And then they've saved water from being wasted or lost or put, you know, back down into the, the watershed. So I think that that is also um, important. And the water quality category, this is this fourth year so we haven't had this category uh, as long as the awards program we've had some iteration of a water category but this is only about three years old since we've had this particular category okay all right let's go to agriculture and forestry the winner okay. last year was in coffee county soil conservation district a soil conservation district so what it what why did it win? What, what is it that we're talking about here? So this, this particular project, I think, after listening to the judges, thought that this would be one, since we have multiple soil conservation districts across the state, they thought that if they were able to share this story, that they knew that other soil conservation districts would be like, hey, I think we could probably replicate that here in our, our, our district and teach the farmers how Coffee County did it they were able to change their tilling process from and i am not the best agriculture forestry person so i'm not going to get too deep into the weeds but they changed their tilling process to a no-till practices in the fields there in coffee county which in in turn increases the the nutrient value of the, the soil because they're not constantly having you know to turn the, the dirt and lose all the nutrients that are in it so they've they've been able to help the farmers learn how to do this process so that way they have more uh, nutrient rich soil for their practices whether they're you know planting or those types of things in the field so I think that they were able to um, have 18 different farmers they had 58 fields that they did 2200 acres that participated in the study and it was almost a, I believe like close to a 40 year continuous no-till practices and they were able to take all of the data to see what what type of nutrient savings they had okay so it was a long project all right all right I might understand that is there anything um, from past years before we move on is there anything from past years that, that needs to be lifted up or might inspire us as far as agriculture and forestry? 
So this is also one of our new categories. So it's only a couple of years new. And the year before the Department of Agricultural, the Department of Ag, I'm tongue tied, <laughs> Agriculture Division of Forestry won for their hemlock woolly adult, and I can't say the word, it's a HWA non-native invasive insect where they were able to save um, 150,000 acres of hemi wool, hemlock woolly trees across the eastern part of the state by getting rid of this this insect, an invasive insect. And if anybody knows anything about bugs and trees and the forestry and parks, they all talk about don't bring wood from out of state, you know, burn local wood, those types of things, because you can bring insects in. Well, they were able to um, help eradicate a particular insect that was killing the hemlocks in on the plateau and in eastern Tennessee with this, this strike team. They called it a strike team, the Division of Forestry strike team. So Fascinating. That was a, well, that's a big deal. Yeah, that's very that interesting. Is. Yes. That's very interesting. Okay, so, all right, great. All right, what we're going to do, we're take a break. And we're going to come back and we'll talk about some others because there are a bunch here. Um, there's renewable energy sources and, and other things. But okay, we'll take a break and we'll come back and talk some more. Holding up things uh, that are positive as far as the environment is concerned. Take a break. Be back right after this.